More than 30,000 people are living with cystic fibrosis, or CF, in the United States. Most of them were told they had the life and breath limiting disease by the time they were two. Yet because of the risk of cross infection, meeting each other in person can literally be life threatening. Yet as many of you know, human contact is equally important to a good quality of life. Which is why Ashley Ballou Bonema with the Breathe Bravely organization decided to get a group of CF patients together in a very unique way. And the result is inspiring. Welcome Ashley. Thank you so much for having me today. So tell me a little bit first just about cystic fibrosis and what this is. Sure, it's a genetic disease that is, um, it complicates many different organ systems in the body, but primarily causes chronic lung infections, um, issues with the digestive system due to an increase of sticky, thick mucus, uh, due to a chloride imbalance caused by the genetic mutation. So at what age did you find out that you had CF? I was actually diagnosed at a month old um, due to my brother being diagnosed uh, later in life. So when I came along, they just naturally um, tested me and I had an early diagnosis in the 1980s. Okay, so wait, you just mentioned that your brother also had it and we just talked about in that introduction that you're not supposed to have human contact with them. So. What challenges did you face living with your brother who also had this? Sure, so um, when my brother and I grew up, at that time they didn't understand just how dangerous we possibly could be to one another due to cross infection. Um, and the reason that they are so concerned about individuals with CF being in the same location is because I might harbor different bugs and bacteria in my lungs than somebody else with CF that's never been introduced to those before and vice versa. Um, our bodies might not be able to handle them um, and we just don't want to introduce possible new bacteria and bugs and complications to another individual. But growing up, they didn't, they didn't understand that complication yet. So um, also, you know, in, there are lots of siblings with CF in the United States and it, they just take, you know, extra precautions about not sharing things. Um, and just, you know, good, good hygiene. Um, but they usually think that those who are in the same environment probably harbor the same, same bacteria and bugs. So put this into perspective for us because looking at you, I would have no idea that you're battling this. So what are some everyday complications or struggles that you have to go through? Sure, so, you know, CF is known as an invisible illness until, until it's not, until, you know, I possibly would need oxygen um, and you'd be carrying around an oxygen tank. Um, I do about two, two to three hours worth of treatments every single day, and that includes, you know, putting on this vest that vibrates my lungs to to keep the mucus moving so that it doesn't build up and cause chronic infections. Um, you know, from a young age, I'm inhaling nebulizers. I take over 50, 50 pills a day just to maintain where I am at now. CF is a progressive disease, so it's something that we're tr constantly trying to combat. Um, it currently doesn't have a cure. We have a lot of therapy options, which is really wonderful and has allowed me to still be alive today. Um, but it is something that we're constantly fighting. And pr I, myself, am um, primarily fighting the loss of lung function. Okay. So then this led you to creating Breathe Bravely. Explain what this organization is. Sure. So you alluded to it, you know, it being an invisible illness and not being able to see that. Uh, you know, and that's something I really clung to most of my life, uh, you know, between my teens and my 20s, just because I didn't want to be seen as this disease and to be measured upon that. I am actually a musician, and so that was really important to me that I would be, you know, measured at the same bar as my peers and my colleagues and not, oh, you have CF and, and set, at, set at a different level. So I hid a lot of my life with CF, and I could because, you know, I, I could make it seem seemingly invisible. Um, but it was getting more and more difficult to actually hide it. Um, and I had a great group of friends that really supported me and confronted me and said, you know, we, we know what's going on. We know that you're struggling. Let us in. And so in 2014, I started a blog called Breathe Bravely, uh, just kind of airing, airing what my life really was about. I had absolutely no idea what that would lead to. Um, and I couldn't even begin to fathom that I'd be sitting here today um, and all that has come from, from starting that blog. And how has this blog helped other people as well? I think, you know, at its core, it's allowed people to really understand the complexities of CF uh, and not only see how it affects my life, um, you know, and the trials and the struggles that it creates. But also, I hope that people can see their own lives reflected in mine, that we all have our different trials and we all have our different, you know, circumstances. But at the end of the day, feelings are feelings and obstacles are obstacles. And that's really what connects us. And like you said, you're a musician. And so 
after Breathe Bravely, that led you to Singspire. So explain what this is, and then we're going to take a look and actually see for ourselves. Sure. So while I started Breathe Bravely, the blog originally, I was actually in graduate school for voice performance. Um, there's always been this just inherent love of music and singing my entire life. I, I didn't necessarily know why I was so passionate about singing. Um, I just knew I had to do it. And so I was going through some severe complications during graduate school with cystic fibrosis and not necessarily knowing if I was going to be able to continue to sing due to loss of lung function and possibly you know, facing a transplant. Um, so I thankfully made it through, through that significant trial, but also realized at that same time as I was finishing my graduate work, just how much singing had saved my life, not only mentally, but also physically. So I wondered how I could possibly share that with other individuals with cystic fibrosis and how that might change their quality of life. So Singspire was born, um, which originally and still is a private voice lesson program that pairs individuals with CF to professional voice instructors for 10 weeks of private lessons. And it's really incredible. And I want to, because we're running out of time, I just want to get to it so we can actually show them how this works and look. So let's take a look. Wow, this is incredible, and I can tell how inspiring this really is. So thank you so much for coming in today and sharing this with me. Thank you so much.